This morning, I want to speak a message that I spoke a few months ago, but I want to come to you today with fresh anointing and fresh revelation. And uh, also, I was speaking to Gerard, and he taught me some Hebrew. So I'm not, a, I'm not a Hebrew scholar at all, but he showed me something that's going to bless you today. And so I want you to be ready for, for a shift. I know it's not a supernatural service, but it's going to be a supernatural service. I want you to be ready for a shift. Amen? That we shift something. I've come to tell you with a fresh anointing upon my life today that the Lord will preserve you. The Lord will keep you. You're not going down. God is going to be with you. His hand is upon you. And He's going to preserve you. And He's going to increase you. So that is what today is going to be about. And so I want you to be ready for that. So let's turn to Psalm 144. And we're going to read from verse 1. It says this, blessed be the Lord. Everything starts with relationship with God. And this psalm also ends with the Lord. It says this, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. So everything begins with God. Uh, in Bible language, He is what we call the Alpha. That is the beginning. And the end, Omega, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. I want to say this to you today, that prosperity follows relationship with God. Blessing follows relationship with God. When we put God first, there's something about it. He lifts us up. He upholds us. He strengthens us. Blessed be the Lord. I want to say we must praise Him. In the valley, we praise Him. In the fire, we praise Him. No matter what's happening in your life, I want to say the Lord is worthy to be praised. The Lord is blessed beyond measure. Amen. That's who He is. He is great. He is mighty. He is awesome. It says, blessed is the man whose God is the Lord. There, there are many different gods. Some people, money is a God. For some people, their job is their God. For some people, there's an idol, is their God. But the Bible says, blessed is the man whose God is the Lord. Because the Lord is faithful, and the Lord is good, and the Lord is mighty, and His arm is not short that He cannot deliver you. He is wonderful, and He loves you today, and He wants to preserve you. And I pray the Lord will show Himself strong in your family. He will show Himself strong in your workplace. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. I want you to raise your hand to heaven and just, just begin to bless him. Just say, Lord, I love you today. Thank you for your mercies and your goodness. Thank you for who you are. Lord, I acknowledge you today. I honor you. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I love the Lord's prayer because it, it says this, all glory and all honor belongs to him. Amen. When you put God first, above your life, uh, we put him first because this is not about a man. Everything is above the Lord, is about the Lord. When you wake up in the morning, praise the name of the Lord. When you make a decision, make a decision with the Lord in mind. I love the scripture because the Bible says, I know your thoughts from afar. Even our thinking, the Lord knows. So when, you, when you're walking down the street, honor the Lord with your thoughts. Put Him first in everything. When God is first, He will lift you up. Honor Him. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. I honor Him with every decision. I honor Him in my relationships. I honor Him with my thoughts. I honor him with my giving. Blessed be the Lord. Everything is for him. When God is number one in your life, you will discover that God's hand is mighty to deliver. When God is number one in your life, you'll discover God's hand is mighty to lift you up. Amen. Above everything else, he is the Lord. Do you know what the Lord means? When you say Lord, you're saying, Lord, I am subject to you. Lord, your, your voice has authority in my life. I put you first. Amen? That's what it means. Blessed be the Lord. Now look what it says here in verse 1. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Did you know that the Lord is a strength? He is your rock. God is not jelly that he should wobble. 
God doesn't wobble. He's your rock. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you know what? He's never changed his mind concerning you. God has not changed his mind. He still has you on his mind. Blessing is still on his mind. Goodness is still on his mind. Faithfulness is still on his mind. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Do you know what that rock means? It means he is your anchor. Have you ever seen those storms on TV or on YouTube? You see those massive storms that come into these coastal cities. And when those storms hit, the ships or the boats are landing up on the, on the seashore, are landing up upside down all over the place. Do you know why? They lost their anchor. But I've come to tell somebody, the Lord is your rock and he shall not be moved. The Lord is your rock and he shall not be changed. Even in the midst of the storm, you shall be stable in him. Amen. The Lord is my rock. Somebody say, my rock. Who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. In other words, what God is saying, and this is the word that I've, I come under the anointing of the Spirit to tell you. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will give you supernatural ideas. So when he says he trains your hands, God is going to give you ideas. God will, God will bring a person into your mind. God will bring a, a name into your mind so that you can be preserved, so that breakthrough can come for your life. I was in England recently and I heard this story. There's a man and a wife, they're praying. And they felt the Lord say, you're going to open a prayer center and build a prayer tower. And in their mind came a, a town, the name of a town. They went to the town and they looked on Google and they saw a piece of land and they said, there's the land. So they looked up who owned the land and they phoned this man. They said, we want to build a prayer tower. Do you know what the man said? He said, who told you? Do you know what happened? A number of years before this. They had a prophecy. This man had a prophecy that on this land, somebody would build a prayer tower. So when this lady said, uh, we want to buy your land, he, he wanted to know who had told her that this land was designated. And he didn't want to give it to her. He said, I have other property that you can have. Anyway, short, a long story is short. After two years, he came back to them and said, listen, all the other property I have will not work for you. This is the only property that will work for you. Isn't that a powerful? The Lord will train your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Train your hands and your fingers. The big decisions and even the small little details. The Lord is interested in every detail of your life. And he's preparing something good for you. Amen. Come on, raise your hands to heaven. Say, Lord, I thank you. You are preparing something good for me. All right, so the Lord will train my hands. Now, verse 2 says this. My loving kindness and my fortress. My fortress. I was in Mozambique a while back. And I remember going to the Isle of Mozambique. And on this coastal town, there is a fortress. A proper old, like what you would you think fortress, there was a fortress from from hundreds of years ago. And they told me the story, which I don't remember exactly. There was the, the Dutch, I think, fighting the Portuguese, or the Portuguese fighting the Dutch, I don't remember. But those that were in this fortress, did you know that they couldn't defeat them? For two years, they were in this fortress, and they couldn't, you know, that enemy couldn't defeat them. Do you know why? At the bottom of this fortress, they had built a reservoir. And when it rained, the water would be collected in this fortress and come down to this reservoir. And the water was so pure. Even when I was there, weren't you with me? You didn't go to Isle of Mozambique. The water was so pure, you could see right through it. And so they were able to sustain themselves, even in the midst of an enemy coming against them. Because why? They were in a fortress. But the Bible says that the Lord is my fortress. I've come to tell you today, your enemy shall not defeat you. God will sustain you. God will keep you. God has enough supply for you. God will hold, up, hold you up in Jesus' name. Amen. The enemy will be at your gate, but you shall not be overcome. Because the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my fortress. Somebody say, my fortress. 
You see, when I said it, some of you were thinking he's someone else's fortress. No, he's my fortress. Just turn to the person and say, mine. No, with some attitude, mine. When somebody's about to steal something that belongs to you, you say, mine. That's how you say it. My fortress. All right, you've got to make it personal today. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will uphold you. So the Lord is my fortress. He is my high tower. I love that. In other words, when the enemy comes to you, they will not be able to touch you. Do you know why? All they can do is look up. And they're going to see you flourishing and blessed up there. Oh, they cannot touch you. Oh, they can just see you. Because the Lord is your high tower. He will deliver you. And He is my deliverer. The Lord is my shield. You know, at the beach, you go down there and they have the uh, sun cream. You know, I need like 50 plus. But the Lord is your shield. He is one zillion plus. Nothing shall get through. You can lie out in the desert. The Lord will preserve you. You will come out. You look like oil of a lay. Because the Lord is your shield. No dart shall be able to get through. No enemy shall be able to get through. You're going to be um, upheld in the name of Jesus. That I declare it over this church. Amen. The Lord is my shield and the one in whom I take refuge. Who subdues my people under me. Now look what it says here. Verse 3. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him? Or the son of man that you are mindful of him. That, you know, the angel said to the Lord, what is man? Why, why, why do you take such interest in man? Because it says that our life is just a breath. You know, when it's cold and you get outside and you breathe and you see, you see your air coming out and then it disappears. So the Bible says, compared to eternity, my life, your life, is like that breath. And it's gone. So the angels say, what is man, Lord, that you are, you are so mindful of him? Now Psalm 8 verse 4 says the same thing. What is man that you are mindful of him? And this is what is so powerful today. The word mindful means zakar. Everybody say zakar. Zakar. Now the Hebrew language is interesting because every letter also has a name. So in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew language, uh, every letter has its own name, letters. And the first letter for Zakar is Zayin. Now listen to this carefully. Zayin, when you look at the letter Zayin, and I should have had a picture for you on the screen, but basically it looks like a T, if you just take the letter T, and instead of having a straight line at the top of the T, it's kind of, it's kind of got an angle to it. And this letter means sword. Zayin. Sword. And the second letter is also very important. Um, it means palm. Palm of a hand. And actually, original, in the original uh, roots of those words, it means potential or actual potential. And what it means is this, that God is fighting for your potential. Amen. And his palm is towards you. In other words, he's fighting for your blessing. Amen. Thank you for those three amens. Amen. The Lord is fighting for your potential. All right, that's what it means. So when it says the Lord is in remembrance of you, he is thinking of ways of how he can fight for you. Amen. He is thinking of ways how he can defend you. God is thinking of ways of how he can bring about his blessing in your life. What is man that you are mindful of him? You see, before you were created, God had something in mind for you. Your actual destiny was locked up in God. And so right now, God is thinking of ways of how he can fight for that potential to come into existence. Wow. What is man that you are mindful of him? The Lord is thinking about every single one of you right now. Every trial, every desert you might be in, every problem you might be in, God is thinking of a way to bless you. Isn't that powerful? So what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man. 
that you think upon him. And then verse 4 says, man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Now look what it says. Bow down you, your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. In the Bible, mountains speak of kingdoms and authorities, powers. But when the Lord comes to fight for you, he will touch those powers. He will touch those kingdoms. And it says they shall smoke. In other words, they shall burn before you. So touch them, Lord. Come down. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and destroy them. Stretch out your hand from above and rescue me and deliver me, Lord, from these great waters that I'm in. So there you see the, the hand of the Lord fighting for you. He has his sword outstretched towards you to deliver you and to keep you. Hallelujah. He will open the heavens and fight for you. He will touch the mountains and destroy them for you. He will shoot arrows for you to protect you and to keep you. You shall not fail. I've come to tell you today the Lord shall preserve you. The Lord shall keep you. The Lord shall uphold you. You shall not fail. Do you hear me? This is the power of the Lord God Almighty. He says, I'm fighting for you and I'm thinking about you. You can go to bed tonight knowing the Lord is still thinking about you. Thank you, Lord. Rescue me. Deliver me, Lord. And verse 8 says, Deliver me from those whose mouth speak lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. God's going to deliver you from people that are speaking negatively about you at work. They didn't give you the credit that was due to your name. They spoke falsely against you. You don't have to defend yourself. Almighty God has his sword in his hand. He shall defend you. He shall keep you. He shall watch over you. That promotion that was supposed to come your way. Don't fight for yourself. Let God fight for you. You give it to the Lord and say, Lord, you are mindful of me, Lord. Break through and help me. See, when we say, blessed be the Lord, what you're saying is, I live a life of faith. I live a life of trust in God, who is my deliverer, who is my fortress, who is my mighty tower. You don't have to fight yourself. You see, the moment you begin to defend yourself, you take the Lord's hand away. You say, Lord, you're not fighting for me. I will fight my own battles. But there's a song that we sing in this church. You know what it says? God is fighting for us, pushing back the... Amen. So listen here. You thought it was just a nice song. So we can all go, God is fighting for us. No, it's not just a song. It's the truth. It's the biblical kingdom way. God is your deliverer. God is your fighter. Amen. Just put Exodus 14, 14 on the screen. I want you to read this. Read this with faith today. Look, look what it says. Read it with me. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Can somebody just praise the Lord right now? Come on, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord will, the Lord will fight for you. And you'll hold your peace. You're just going to hold your peace. You're going to just say, it's fine. You go ahead because the Lord is about to defend me. The Lord is about to promote me. I will hold my peace. The Lord will defend me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, I want to say this to you. That first part of this, this whole passage was about the Lord preserving us. Preserving us. But God doesn't want to just preserve us. God wants to multiply us. I was saying to our staff this week, I don't want to just be preserved. Preserved means you just, you know, you just made it. Everyone else around you is dead, but you just made it. You look dead, but you're not dead. You... That, that, that is when you're on the high tower. Your enemies are there, and, and God is protecting you, and, and you're not sure what's going to happen, but you made it through anyway. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what's happening in the economy. I've come to tell you, you're going to make it through anyway. You might have lost your job. God's going to open a door for you. 
Something's going to happen. Why? You're the child of the King. And our God is mighty and He's thinking about you. He's gonna, he's, you don't know what's going to happen. I'm telling you now, He's going to keep you. People look at you, they think you're going to disappear. Just turn to them right now. Tell them, I'm going nowhere. I will be preserved. I am like Biltong. Might be a little dried, but I, I'm going to be preserved. I'm going to be preserved. You pull me out on the shelf. In one month from now, you can still eat me. I will be preserved. Amen. That's what God is saying. You're going to make it, somebody. I've come to tell you. You might have lost your job. God's going to keep you. You might have lost the relationship. God's going to keep you. I don't care what's happening. My God is bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger than the economy. He's bigger than the devil. Hallelujah. He's bigger than your landlord. He's bigger than your neighbor. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He's big. He's bigger. That's, you see, until, until you shout in faith, nothing's going to happen. It says, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my strong tower. Somebody needs to look to the Lord and say, Lord, I've lost control, but you are able, you are mighty, you are God. The Lord is about to show His hands. <laughs> you know when they play cards, they say He's going to show His hand. I've come to tell you God's about to show His hand. And I, I don't understand cards, but whatever the, whatever, is it their flush, eh? Whatever? a royal flesh Woo! and your enemy shall be defeated amen amen somebody so God says I will preserve you verse 9 says I will sing a new song I'm gonna sing I'm gonna stop singing I'm gonna stop singing that song of defeat some of you have a have a, have a whole hymn book of negativity songs You wake up in the morning, oh me, oh my. You go to work and you say, oh my, oh me. God's about to change your song. You're going to sing a song of victory. Oh, of glory. Hallelujah. I love the scripture. I read it this week. It says, I saw, you gave it to me earlier. What? Isaiah 32, 15, 15, 1, 5 says this. The, the Lord will make a desert a fruitful field. And He will make a fruitful field as a forest. In other words, if you are dried out, God's going to turn you into a fruitful field. But some of you think, some of you think, you know what, Lord? I'm a fruitful field. I don't need the blessing of the Lord. But God has said, I don't want you to be a fruitful field. I want you to be counted as a forest. It's time for the next level. Come on, time for the next level. Time for the, don't be satisfied just because you're saying, I'm not in the desert, I'm in a fruitful field. God is saying, I don't want you in a fruitful field. He's saying, I want you to be as a forest. God wants to multiply. Somebody say, multiply. Multiply, Lord, in my life. Amen. I will sing a new song. Verse 11 says, Rescue me and deliver me. Then verse 12 says this. Now I love this. says this. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. In other words, God's going to do a quick work in this season. What should have taken you 10 years is going to take you one year. Do you hear what I'm saying? What should have taken you one month, God can do in a, in a, a year. God can do in a month. God's going to take our sons and they will be considered full grown, even in their youth. That's the hand of the Lord. God can do a quick work. God can multiply a season. Even when there was a desert, they had a harvest. Raise your hand to heaven and say, Lord, do a quick work in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. And then it says this. I love this. It says this. Uh, um, God, the sons may be plants grown up in the youth, that our daughters may be as pillars sculptured in palace style. 
Listen here. I have come. And I'm saying to you this morning, we're going to kick that poverty mentality out of Palestine. Palestine. In other words, there's going to be, there's going to be, a, we need to change our thinking. You know, when your thinking is wrong, you pray wrong. When you think wrong, you pray small prayers. When you think like God thinks, you pray big prayers. Palace style. God wants to bless you. Palace style. Just turn to somebody and say, I'm going up a level. Change your thinking right now. Change your thinking right now. Come on, somebody. Change your thinking right now. Palace style. God wants to shift us into a new dimension. God is shifting our church, South Campus. You're about to be shifted supernaturally in the spirit. Anybody that's ready right now in this room, I'm telling you now, God can shift you. You can resist it, but some people are going to be shifted right now. Palace style, a breakthrough, an open door. Our daughters shall be blessed. And then the shift comes in the whole passage. Because, you know, God says, I don't want to just preserve you. I want to increase you. Look what it says. That our barns may be full. Can somebody say full? Can you say it without being ashamed? Full. See, when you have a wrong mentality, this is how you pray. Lord, please don't let my barn blow away. <laughs> this man... He's not worried about it being blown, blown away. He says that it'd be full. And he said bonds. Some of you thought I said bond. You see, he's not worried about a bond being blown away. Because even if it got blown away, he's got another few bonds there. <laughs> you, shall, you shall be preserved, somebody. Somebody say preserved. 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 All the days of my life, the Lord shall keep me. My barn shall be full. To say it again, my barn shall be full. That's the prayer we should be praying. Change your thinking into palace style thinking. Your barn shall be full. You're not going to be retrenched, you're going to be promoted. Change your thinking. Somebody, change your thinking. Amen. Your barns shall be full now some of you are getting upset with me but i want to tell you it's about to get better oh yes that was just the beginning the barn shall be full supplying all kinds of produce in other words god's going to open different streams for you of income god's going to give you new ideas new products people are going to you're not going to look for a job people are going to come looking for you Amen, somebody. All kinds. All kinds. Your barn shall be full. All kinds of produce. And then I love this. That our sheep may bring forth thousands. Isn't that powerful? Listen, some of you are praying for your lamb. You say, Lord, just keep my little lamb. Preserve my lamb. Don't let my lamb die. Maybe that's one of the songs you wrote. Don't let it die, Lord. This little lamb. Don't let it die. But God's about to shift us. You're not going to pray for your lamb. You're going to pray for thousands. But I love this man. I love him because he prays this massive prayer. And he realizes he didn't pray as a king. He says, Lord, that there be thousands. And then he says, no. Ten thousands. Ten thousands. Ten thousands. Ten thousands. In our fields. That our oxen may be well laden. Do you know what that means? Heavy. Do you know what another word for heavy is? Loaded. Just turn to the person next to tell them, I'm loaded. <laughs> I'm heavy. In other words, you're, you're, you're not, you're, you're not going to have your oxen come in skipping so skinny. It's going to be... Come on, somebody praise the Lord right now. Come on, just... 
Just clap that poverty spirit right out of the church right now. Load it, load it, load it, load it out. That our oxen may be well laden. That there be no breaking in, no breaking out. Do you know what that is? Is when things have been stolen from us. God says that is not his plan. How many of you have lost stuff you should never have lost? Come on. That, is the, that was the devil coming in. In the name of Jesus, I pray today there will be an anointing that every hedge that has been opened up shall be closed. Shall be closed. Father, I pray whatever has been stolen, it shall be repaid seven times. Seven times in the name of Jesus. There'll be no breaking in. No breaking out. There be no outcry in our streets. And now this is the best part of it. All verse 15 says, happy. Somebody say happy. happy. Some of you are saying happy. You have to say happy with a smile. Happy. Happy are the people who are in such a state. You know, some people, they, they, they say this to you. Hey, you see that guy? He's in such a state. What they mean is he's like, he's depressed. He's suicidal. They said that family, they are in such a state. You know what they mean? They're just saying they're in poverty and everything's not working out. They're in such a state. But I've come to tell you, God says something different. He says, God says to you, you're not going to be in the United States. You're not going to be in the South African state. You're not going to be in, in an unhappy state. You're going to be in a happy state. We're going to call it the continent of happy. The South Af the country of joy. Somebody say happy. Happy state. The Bible says happy are those who are in such a state. Which, which people are there? People that are blessed. People that are well laden. The people that see the hand of God. What is he saying? You're going to be happy. You see, some people, they hate preaching like this. They are unhappy that you are happy. Do you know what? I want to say this to you. I didn't put this in the Bible. God put this in the Bible so we can understand who the Lord is. Because it says... The man whose God is the Lord, the Lord who has died for us, the Lord who has bought us with a price. He calls us sons and daughters, and we are sons and daughters of the King. And He's a good God, and He's never changed His mind. And He's thinking of ways right now, how He can provide for you, how He can bless you, how He can open a door for you. Happy are the man, happy is the man who is in such estates. I pray in the name of Jesus that people are going to come to X Church and they're going to drive in like this. Woo! Happy, happy, happy. I am blessed of God that there be an anointing upon your life. Happy, happy, happy in your family. Happy in your marriage. Happy in your children. Happy in your workplace. Happy. Why? The Lord God is fighting for you. He's fighting for you. I want you today to, to say to God, Lord, if this is true, I want what you've promised for my life. I'm going to declare it over my life. I'm going to prophesy over my life. I'm going to speak it over my life. You're going to change your thinking and you're going to change your speaking. You're not going to pray for your little lamb. You're going to pray for your thousands. The thousands, Lord. I am prospered. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, you'll open a door for me. I thank you, Lord, you turn this desert into a fruitful field. Come on, just stand to your feet. South Campus, stand to your feet. Pastor Mason, we're going to pray and bless the people right now. You just say, Lord, I thank you. I am blessed. Now raise your hand. Some of you are in trouble. That's why I'm preaching this message. Some of you are angry because you're in trouble. Some of you are, are angry with those that put you in trouble. They cannot deliver you. The Lord is your deliverer. I want you to begin to pray. A prayer that is worthy. A prayer that is big. 
Don't stand there and say, oh Lord, just touch me today. No, I want you to pray a prayer. I want you to pray a prayer as this man prayed. Begin to pray over your barns. Begin to pray over your produce. Begin to pray over your hands. Begin to pray and say, Lord, I thank you for favor. Pray for wisdom right now. Somebody begin to pray. Raise your hands. Pray a big prayer. Somebody pray a big prayer. Pray a big prayer. When you've prayed it, just increase it by 10. Come on, God is bigger than that. Pray, 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 pray. Say, Lord, I thank you right now for this prayer. 